Good morning. Good morning, everyone, and a welcome to First Universalist Church of Yarmouth. My name is Sarah Witte. I'm the president of the Board of Trustees. I'm so happy to be greeting you all today. A warm welcome to everyone gathered here on a chilly morning and to all our friends out in Zoom. Great that you're able to do that. At First Universalist, our mission is to explore our faith, to embrace this community, and to engage the world as spiritual seekers. May we take those words to heart. If this is your first time to visiting our congregation, welcome. We invite you to fill out a congregation connection card located in front of you in your pew so that we connect you with things going on here and also perhaps sign you up for our Friday email, reach out to you with uh, messages from the minister or congregation connections committee. We'd love to send you our weekly e-newsletter. For those of us joining with young children, nursery care is available all during the service at the end of the hall um, for babies and toddlers. A note that today's service is multi-generational, meaning it is friendly for everyone. Instead of holding children's chapel downstairs during the service, all children are welcome to stay and participate in this special service of welcoming and thanksgiving. And following our service, Everyone's welcome to join us downstairs for coffee hour. We go out that back door, down the stairs, and right under here. Um, and today we'll have a special coffee hour celebration for our new members joining the church today. And now, I invite you to take a deep breath and settle into this time together that we create each week. And our music director, Sam Chandler, will lead us and the choir in to worship. Thank you, choir. Good morning. How are you? Good. It's good. To, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Here we are. This is it. It's good to see you. My name is Hillary. I serve as the minister here at First Universalist. And friends, it's with peace and thanks this morning that I say, whoever you are, wherever you're from, whomever you love, whatever it is you have done or have not done, you're welcome here. And we're thankful that you're here. Today, as we gather upon the ancestral dawnland of the Wabanaki Confederacy, 
Friends, we offer a service of welcome and thanksgiving. This will be a service that honors two truths. The first, the truth that we have much to be thankful for. This beautiful earth, these blue skies, that November light, the spirit of life and love that abides with us always, the gifts of bread and water and the gift of this community and friends new and longstanding who are here with us today. And the second truth that we also have much to grieve and reckon with in our lives, in these times, in this world, as we live embedded in this, our American history. And so today in this special Thanksgiving service, we will welcome new members to this church. We will lift up joys and sorrows. We will lament our history and give thanks for possibility. And we will break and share bread together. Welcome. This is a big one. This is a special one. This is a good one. And there is a seat for you at this table. So pull up a chair. Our words of invocation this morning are by Joy Harjo, former US Poet Laureate and member of the Muscogee Creek Nation. Joy Harjo's last name means crazy brave. Joy, crazy brave. Blessed be. Her poem I share is a good one and likely a familiar one. It is entitled, Perhaps the World Ends Here. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it, we make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth at this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table, we sing with joy and sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at a kitchen table while we are laughing and crying and eating the last sweet bite. Good morning everyone to this sweet moment. Why not take a moment now on this special day to turn to your neighbors, wish them a good morning and wait for it. Tell them your favorite kind of pie. <laughs> Do you need a moment to think? Think.
there were some very serious conversations happening just now. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. We can continue them later. But first, will you join me in rising in body or spirit and singing our opening hymn, my friends? Number 347, Gather the Spirit. standing and join me in reciting the words of our unison affirmation written in your order of worship. We are united in seeking to increase love with justice and to constitute a free church open to all people, mindful of our past and drawing upon modern knowledge we respond to the spiritual needs of persons and are devoted to the common good, community, nation. We cherish the integrity of each individual and search for truth with reason as our guide. We respect differences of opinion and strive to be a democratic community. We are concerned with this world and open to the you may be seated. And I invite any kiddos or folks young at heart forward to help me light our chalice, the symbol of our faith. Oh, 
So today we hold a ceremony of welcoming for new friends who have chosen to join our church. And you know, our congregation is a moving, living, changing thing. Anytime new people join, we have the opportunity to grow together, to share and receive new ideas and new energy and new voices. And each of the people joining our church today brings unique experiences and perspectives to our community. And we are so grateful for that. Today, we welcome new members to our community. Some of these folks signed the membership book and joined our church during COVID and we, when we were unable to gather in our building. And some will be signing the book and officially joining our church today. Yeah. As we welcome this new and new-ish members of our community forward now, Please show them a sign of our welcome and joy. So Jennifer Caven. Come on up. Come on, Come on up. up. Come on up. Um, Mary Cheney and Ryan McKisson. Dale Shields and John Abel. Jessica and Peter Fromith. Jenny Jefferson and Joe Porter. And Debbie Starkle. We at First Universalist warmly welcome you as new members of our community this morning. You have come to worship, play, work, breathe, grow, sing with us. And I invite you to join with us in our religious search for meaning and purpose in life, informed by our individual beliefs and the traditions of Unitarian Universalism. As part of our ceremony this morning, you will have found a responsive reading in your order of worship. And there are parts both for our congregation and our new joining members to recite. And I invite you as we recite these words, my friend, to rise in body or spirit. Friends of our congregation, will you begin? We welcome, we welcome you, you as, as we were once, once welcomed ourselves. As you join us, we renew our commitment to First Universalist. We are an open-minded and open-hearted spiritual community who live lives of justice, love, learning, and hope. Yes. Yeah. You guys now. <laughs> we seek to be open and inclusive, respecting your inherent dignity, your ideas, and your vision. We seek to be supportive, not only when you reach out to encourage to us, but also when you need us to reach out to you. Everybody now. In return, we ask that you recognize our humanity. We will not always live up to our ideals. And when we fall short, we invite you to stay in relationship with us and, and help, help us more fully bring, bring alive the spirit of love. It is with peace and friendship that, that we welcome you as equal members of this congregation of Unitarian, Unitarian Universalism and of our shared spiritual journey. 
We are We're proud, proud and, and happy, happy to have, have, have you among us. us. Welcome. 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 <laughs> Now we welcome each of you, unless you've already done this, <laughs> to sign the book, which is on the table in front of you. And once you've signed, you can say hello to Hillary, hello to Gwen, come say hi to me. And then we have a little gift for you over here. So um, let's take it. Don't rush. You may be seated, time. friends in the pews. You want to come over here? It's easier. Welcome, Gail. Well, can you give me a hug? I am. <laughs> you should just keep it wide. Friends, we'll close the ceremony by rising once again and singing our doxology together, the lyrics of which you'll find in your order of worship.
we now come to the time in our service that we set aside for quiet prayer and meditation. This is a time to reflect on the events of the past week, look forward to what might come in the days ahead, offer prayers of loving kindness or thanks, or simply be here now in this sunny moment. Following our time of quiet, all will be invited to come up and light a silent candle for anything you have on your heart and mind today. First though, won't you join me in taking a deep, refreshing breath in, a calming breath out, and relax into this sacred time of silence. May all these lights glow ever brighter with our love and care. May all we hold inside this morning be eased with comfort and kindness. And may the joys and sorrows that exist beyond these walls be met with attention and compassion. Friends, will you join me in a time of thanksgiving and prayer? Parts of these words are adapted from a prayer of thanksgiving and atonement by the monks and nuns of the Zen Mountain Monastery. Today, we gather together in joyful thanksgiving. We give thanks for our friends, our family, our beloved animals and the bounty of our community and the beauty of this place we share. We give thanks for the sacred life of every being, plant and animal that surrounds us. We give thanks for you, for your life and the goodness you have to share with the world. We give thanks to justice seekers and change makers who empower the marginalized, respect the poor, care for the addicted, welcome the newcomer, and never stop bending our arc of the moral universe towards justice. This year, we especially give thanks to our teachers, our small business owners, our nurses, our veterinarians, our counselors, social workers, and all caregivers. If there is someone or a group of beings for whom you are especially grateful this year, let them come into your mind now. As we gather in thanks today, we also gather in solemn remembrance and prayer. We honor the tribes of the Wabanaki Confederacy, the people of the Dawnland, the Abenaki, the Penobscot, the Mi'kmaq, the Passamaquoddy, and the Maliseet. We acknowledge that the Wabanaki revered and lived in intimate contact with all the many creatures of these woods, bays, islands, hills, and rivers for thousands of years. We acknowledge the violence, deception, and destruction that was brought upon the Wabanaki in order to create our lifestyle today. May we atone for any harms that our presence on these lands has caused and take responsibility for understanding and addressing this harm. May we begin this work today by showing our appreciation for the ancestors of this land and by living in peace and harmony with this sacred place and all the sacred beings that inhabit it. Today, we give thanks for the love we have to give and the love we are able to receive. May we be generous and radical with this love today, this week, this year, and always. Amen.
Recognizing our current theme of change, we share this week's offering with Maine Inside Out. Led by formerly incarcerated people, Maine Inside Out's mission is to improve outcomes for youth returning home after incarceration. Workshops involve a creative process in which participants learn to identify the root causes of oppression while developing a powerful language to inform and engage the greater community in dialogue about social change. Maine Inside Out creates and shares powerful original theater inside detention centers and in communities across the state. Your offering supports these youth seeking to change their lives. For those in the sanctuary this morning, we'll be passing the offering plate to one another. And for those gathered online, you are invited to make your offering using the donate button in your order of worship. Thank you. You may also make an offering anytime by dropping a check in the mail. Thank you so much. Thank you. seated. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. The world begins at the kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. 
The gifts of the earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation and it will go on. Today, in this sanctuary, at this time of year when the sun fades and the harvest ends, we've gathered together to make sense of our history and celebrate our present. We've gathered to give thanks, to mourn wrongdoing, to seek good change, and to break bread. Friends, we now celebrate our Thanksgiving bread communion. It seems one of the most sacred, important, and routine things people have done for millennia is gather together to break bread. And thus the ritual connects us through time and space to the earth and the cycle of life, to our history, and to all the people through the years who have looked into each other's eyes across this sanctuary. All are welcome to participate in our bread communion. In a moment, we'll invite you to rise from your seat as you are able and make a circle around our sanctuary. We will then come around with a basket of bread for you. Take a, a piece of this bread, but please don't eat it immediately. <laughs> Got that? Okay, wonderful. Please don't eat it immediately. Um, if you need a gluten-free piece of bread, just raise your hand and one will make its way to you. If you need to remain seated where you are, please do what is comfortable. The bread basket will still make its way to you. Friends on Zoom, you're welcome to participate in this ritual with us. All you need is a piece of bread or a cracker or a chip. <laughs> so friends, once you rise now as you're able and gather around our sanctuary, the bread baskets will make their way to you. Please just touch the piece you are going to take. <laughs> If you need a gluten-free piece, please put your hand in the air and leave it there until I come by. This is regular, yes. Of course. Yeah, of course. Regular?
hold your piece of bread in your hands and look around the room. Notice the sense of connection that naturally arises in this circle. Perhaps you can feel our shared life, our shared humanness, the broken hearts and mended hearts we each possess. In a moment, we will ring our singing bowl, and when you hear it, quietly break your bread. And as you do, allow your heart to break open. Break the bread, but do not eat it. Just hold the bread. <laughs> In case you weren't clear about that already. <laughs> um, just hold the broken bread and notice what wells up in your broken heart. Allow a word or phrase to you that allow a word or phrase to come to you as you look at your broken bread that gives voice to any sadness or compassion present in your heart. We'll then ring the bowl again, and at this time you'll be invited to speak a word or phrase that explains this sadness, expresses this sadness into our circle. You can let words tumble over words. You can say them quietly or loudly. Trust that the whole is larger than any of us and we'll hold it all. We'll then ring the bowl a third time and return to our shared quiet. So won't you, we will eat it eventually. <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> if that's what your heart is breaking over right now. <laughs> As they ring this bowl, won't you break this piece of bread? As I ring this bowl again, speak a word of your grief or compassion into this circle. And let's return to our shared quiet. In the circle of our community, having given voice to our grief and pain, let us notice the larger forces that hold us, the earth, that grounds us and sustains our life, the floor, walls, and roof of our church, the great mystery, the spirit of life, the sacred, sacred presence that some call God, the abiding force of love that holds us and will never let us go. There is so much for us to be grateful for. Our life together as a community is a blessing. There is so much love and care passion and dedication right here in this circle. In a moment, the singing bowl will sound again. And when it does, look at your piece of bread, smell it, feel it, admire it. See the miracle of this bread made from earth and water, warmed by fire, kneaded by hands. As you take in the bread with your senses, let a sense of gratitude arise within you for what you have in your life. Notice what you feel grateful for in this moment. And if you wish, allow a word or phrase to form that gives voice to your gratitude. When the bell rings again, you're invited to speak this thankful word or praise into our circle, allowing words to tumble over words, trusting that they'll be held in this great web of life. Appreciate your piece of bread. Letting gratitude arise within you. Speak a word of your thanks into the circle. Thanks. And we return to our climb. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. 
we pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Having honored our grief and our gratitude, honored the earth and this precious life, please now eat and enjoy <laughs> this bread. Symbol of work and goodness, symbol of connection through all time to all life. <laughs> As we close our bread communion, will you repeat this closing prayer after me? Blessed be this circle. Blessed be the circle. Blessed be these broken and mended hearts. Blessed be these broken and mended hearts. Blessed be the gifts of our precious earth. Blessed be the gifts of our precious earth. And blessed be this moment. Blessed be this moment in which we are alive and nourished. In which we are alive and nourished. Amen. Amen. You may return to your seats, my friends. And when you do, stay standing and join us in singing our closing hymn, number 349, We Gather Together. Thank you. Will you remain standing for a closing prayer? Thank you all for being here today. Welcome to our new members. We hope to see you downstairs at coffee hour after this service. There will be cake to celebrate our new members. And I ask once again this week that you sit back down during our postlude, which will be sung by our choir this morning. I will depart down the center aisle and greet you on your way out. May all beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all beings experience profound joy and the causes of profound joy. May all beings have much to be grateful for and feel a deep connection to each other and this precious earth. And will you join me in the words of our unison benediction writ in your order of worship. For those who come here seeking God, may God go with you. For those who come embracing life, may life return your affection. For those who come to seek a path, may a way be found and the courage to take it step by step. Amen, go in peace and happy Thanksgiving.